Obviously, the co-main event was amazing. An incredible fight. Garbrandt looked better than he's ever looked yeah. in his career. Dominic Cruz is great. Dominic Cruz is amazing, and Cody Garbrandt made it look, look easy tonight. Uh, and he was the complete opposite of what everybody thought he was going to be. Right. Everybody thought he was this hothead, angry guy that was going to run in and just look for the knockout punch. Couldn't be more opposite. Um, he looked incredible tonight. I don't know what to say. Then. Today, we will recall one of the most touching, epic, and overall memorable moments in the history of the Ultimate Fighting Championship and mixed martial arts in general. A moment that has etched itself into our consciousness so deeply that it's unlikely we will ever experience similar emotions if something like this happens again. Get comfortable and grab some tissues because we're about to tell you about the bittersweet journey of Cody Garbrandt, the UFC Bantamweight Champion. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give a like and leave a comment of four words. Now, let's dive in. Promise me to beat cancer and I promise to make it to the UFC. That's the headline of today's topic that we'll delve into further. Meet this named Maddox Maple. From birth until the age of five, the age when a person begins to comprehend what's happening and explore the world, he was just an ordinary child from an average family. In April 2011, everything was normal, but by July, the boy learned many words he shouldn't know at his age. Leukemia, chemotherapy, treatment for a severe illness. In an instant, his life turned upside down and he had to fight for his own life, a life that hadn't even properly begun. He was five years old. He woke up about three o'clock in the morning with extreme pain. He told us that it was appendicitis. The surgeon came in and he's like, something's just don't seem right. Like, it just don't seem like that's his appendix. He would be in more pain. And um, then they came in Tuesday morning and told us that they were pretty sure he had cancer. <laughs> The stark contrast was happening in the backdrop of young Cody Garbrandt, who was standing at a crossroads, unsure of what to do. Given his family's history, it seemed like jail was more likely for him. Many of you might already know about No Love's past, but we'll recap the key points for those just entering the world of mixed martial arts. Anyone who knew Cody from his childhood would probably have assumed that if a spotlight ever shone on him, it would have been in an interrogation room rather than under the arena's thousands of spotlights. His father was a failure, rarely showing up at home and spending most of his time in an Ohio prison. Cody's uncle, too, had his fair share of time in not-so-distant correctional facilities. For the Garbrandt family, prison was just another place to reside. Even Uncle Robert, who raised Cody, was intimately familiar with the process of receiving a sentence. Cody followed the same path, getting expelled from school for fighting. Then he started to sell drugs and get into various troubles. No one had any hope that this guy would be any different from his relatives. Working in coal mines was his brightest prospect, or at worst, becoming another inmate at a county jail. However, before plunging into the abyss, Garbrandt encountered his guardian angel. There's no other way to describe it. Engaged in amateur boxing, 19-year-old Cody heard about a 5-year-old boy from the outskirts of town who was diagnosed with blood cancer. He learned about it from his brother Zach and without much hesitation reached out to Maddox Maple's father on Facebook. In the life of that boy, Cody Garbrandt became a guardian angel, a simple guy with an unsavory past and a similar future, judging by how other members of his family ended up. When No Love spoke to Maddox's father, they agreed that Cody would come to their home after they returned from the hospital. First met Cody, first week he was in the hospital. He said, if possible, I'd like to meet him, I'd like to come over, he told me a little about himself and that, you know, absolutely. He spent an hour and a half with the Maples, interacting with the very shy and quiet Maddox. As a troubled teenager, trying to pursue amateur boxing simultaneously, he realized something crucial about himself that day. Cody was willingly wasting his life when there was an innocent child nearby forced to fight for his own existence, a life that hadn't even properly begun. Came over and met him and, um, you know, Max was really shy and just kind of sat around and stared at him. I think all the tattoos freaked him out at first. After their conversation, Cody became a full-fledged member of the Maddox family from that moment on. The five-year-old boy and the 19-year-old teenager took on the roles of mentors for each other, supporting one another through life's toughest challenges. They met under dire circumstances, 
but at the right time and from then on they began to march towards their goals shoulder to shoulder. By that time, Cody had set his sights on MMA and was diligently working in training, approaching the day when he could turn professional. When competing in amateur bouts, he would bring little Maddox to the arena, and the money he earned from winning various tournaments went towards the boy's treatment, covering courses and assisting his family. As time passed, Garbrandt entered the professional league, clearing the path of his opponents and nearing the opportunity to join the main organization. However, at a certain point, two years into Maddox's treatment, the seven-year-old began losing the will to fight. He was giving up on taking medications and falling into despair, influencing his family to do the same. Not knowing what to do, Maddox's father reached out to Cody. One night, um, he, he looked at his mom and just told her that um, he, just, he, he was done. He just wanted to give up, just tired of taking the pills. We knew there was one person, if we could get his little heart turned around, make this easier on us, it would be Cody. It was then that the fighter and the young boy made an agreement, as we mentioned at the beginning. No Love sent Maddox a video urging him to stay strong. He mentioned training every day and believed that he would soon get a chance to enter the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He promised to make it happen and secure a victory in the UFC, provided the boy continued the fight against cancer and didn't give up until the illness retreated. This fight is, you know, very important to me. I look on it, think of him every day and his family. And, you know, when I don't want to get up and go train and my body's sore, you know, I look at him and he, he, he motivates me. He sends me videos um, his, through his dad saying that, you know, he loves me and, and he misses me. And, you know, that, that right there um, is, means more than anything in the world to me. As you can understand, Cody simply had no choice. At that time, he had five consecutive victories to his name and he moved to Sacramento to train under Team Alpha Male. Eventually, he managed to connect with UFC representatives and signed a contract with the premier MMA promotion. His part of the deal with the boy began to slowly materialize. Fortunately for Maddox, everything was going well for him too. After Cody's promise, he reached the point where he started taking the last tablets from his chemotherapy course. On August 25th, 2014, he entered the remission stage. No Love's debut in the Ultimate Fighting Championship was scheduled for UFC 182 on January 3rd, 2015. Maddox, along with his parents and little sister, was there to witness their agreement being fulfilled. One of Garbrandt's sponsors, Todd Meldrum, funded the entire Maple family's trip to be with Cody at the event. We really care for each other. Like he helped me beat cancer and like when I was down he made me feel up and get up and take my medicine and stuff. So if he wasn't around I don't know what I would do. He gave me this flag, he made it, and it says 92 with cancer ribbon. And every time that I used to walk him down to the ring, he always used to want me to leave it so everyone would know that we came from the 922 area. Well uh we're gonna have to get that flag ready because guess what? We have a fight coming up. We got a fight coming up, and guess what you're gonna do? Walk me down. Walk you down to the camp. Yay! I'm so excited! It's gonna be awesome. Woo! You excited for it? Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, I'm gonna hold so that excited. in until you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's in remission. He's gonna. You know, keep beating cancer, and we're gonna keep climbing the UFC ladder until you know he's cancer-free, and I'm um, the UFC champion. Said and done. Over the next two years, Cody Garbrandt did everything to climb the rankings and catch the attention of the promotion's matchmakers. Elegant technique, appealing charisma, sharp words, and other finer factors, coupled with five more victories under the UFC banner, propelled No Love into a title shot. On December the 30th, 2016, Cody Garbrandt got the chance to challenge for the bantamweight belt, facing one of the best fighters of his time, the Matrix controller, Dominic Cruz. Yeah, it's everything I dreamed of. I've, you know, pictured facing Dominic for quite some time since I was a, excuse me, since I was a teenager, and uh, you know, I'm two days away from that. None of those guys have a clue what to do with me, so there's nothing they can tell him. And he's gonna figure that out after the first round when he's in there punching. He's in there missing. He's looking for that big punch that he's landed on everybody else. And he goes to land that punch, and I'm gone. I'm a ghost. I'm not there. 
And then he goes to do it again and I'm gone and I'm not there. And then he's getting hit and he's getting hit. And when he goes and sits on that stool after the first round and he looks at his corners, he's gonna know his corners have nothing they can tell him. I fought them for 27 plus rounds. I've maybe lost five rounds of those rounds against the corners that he's gonna have there, against his teammates, the teammates that I've made a living off of, Team Alpha Fail. So bring it, let's go. For your information, Cody wasn't even in the top five of his weight class at that time. All he had was 10 wins with zero losses, a clear understanding that the dream of his life was within reach and a promise to a boy who helped him navigate through a tough situation. So none of Dominator's trash talk and analytical abilities could reach the depths of Garbrandt's soul. You must have the luck. But your luck's luck run out, your time's up. Luck. I go out there and you are a loser, you're a dork. What you are. More opinions that More don't opinion. That's my opinion. Well, okay. Well, I don't care about your opinions. I'm not giving you opinions. Yeah, I'm giving I, yeah, you facts. You do. And the facts, facts are facts. you have a 30% chance of even touching me, which takes your 90% chance of 1%. your 90% knockout rate 1%, down one to shot. 30%. One it doesn't shot. matter. All I need is one shot, Dom. And you know that. The co-main event of UFC 207 went down in history as one of the most resounding and legendary upsets of its time. On that very night, we witnessed the peak, the most focused, the toughest, and the most dangerous version of Cody Garbrandt. Incredible composure and preparedness turned the seemingly impossible into reality. The young prospect performed in a way that made the experienced and smartest fighter in the Ultimate Fighting Championship look like an ordinary guy from the outskirts putting on MMA gloves for the first time. Following five rounds of domination, Cody Garbrandt defeated Dominic Cruz by unanimous decision, becoming the UFC Bantamweight Champion. It sounds amazing. I've been waiting to hear that and visualize that since I was 12 years old since I first watched the UFC. Um, you know, it's been a great journey. I want to thank everybody that's uh, been a part of it uh, from the beginning till now. And I wouldn't be here without a lot of uh, support from them, and especially this man right here. He really brought re-faith and redirection in my life. Maddox Maple was five years old, diagnosed with leukemia, and fought his ass to be able to walk me down here and for me to finally be able to do this for him. I was just blown away because it was a dream for us to um, get the belt, and I was just so happy for us, and I, it was just emotional. It was awesome, you know, because seeing him loving that belt, he saved my life, so that just makes me feel so good that I can do something really nice for him since he helped me, he helped me save my life, so it's just awesome. Nearly six years ago, I met this kid in uh, unfortunate circumstances, and we made the best of it, and now we're here in New York being able to share our story, and it's uh, blessed times that we have right now. Share your thoughts in the comments under this video. Write honestly only what emotions this story personally evoked in you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss new videos and of course, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Until next time.